Alright, hi there. Um, I'm making this video quickly to explain to you how to repair a Panasonic Lumix TS1 or TF1, depending on where you bought it. It's a waterproof, shockproof, underwater camera I bought. Uh, I've used it to go across Africa with, and it was a fantastic camera. Don't get me wrong. However, I went through a grade 5 rapid on a bodyboard and managed to crack the lens. All good, still works fantastically, nothing wrong with the camera, it's still a great camera. However, Panasonic refused to help me regardless whether I wanted to pay or not and no disrespect to Panasonic, they make fantastic cameras, their customer support sucks. Um, however, it's quite easy to repair and Whilst this may not be the uh, best way to repair it, this is my way of repairing it and it may give you some pointers as to what to do to repair yours should you have the same situation. Now, you've got some Allen heads in each corner as you may be very familiar in the, on either side, the front and back. They don't do anything so don't bother with those. Now what you will need is a very small uh, Alan um, Phillips, you take the top plate off and that will expose a further plate. Uh, look, let me just get it out and you'll see it. What I should point out just whilst I'm doing this is that. Um, the, the piece of glass in the front of the lens is actually um, sacrificial and it's intended to be broken and replaced. It doesn't actually hold any optics to it that are very important to the camera. Despite what Panasonic may tell you, I wouldn't say that they're, they're worth anything. Now, it so happens I've already removed mine and I just want to show you how to get to it. It happens to be a one one millimeter thick piece of glass which looks something like this. Now that same piece of glass in thickness is the same type of glass that you'd use in a microscope slide. Um, they're very very cheap to find actually and um, if you know anyone who works in a research lab or in a hospital or as a pharmacist, you may be able to get you some of these for next to nothing or free. So that's a good thing to be able to tell you. Now bear with me whilst I get this thing off, I can't remember how I did it. Oh, I do actually, but it's just a bit tricky. Right. First off, the buttons at the top actually do come off. It's just a slight um, Thing here. <laughs> right. There we go. Once that is out, cook it with gas. take apart before, there we are. It's a bit fiddly but once you get there it's not that hard. It will expose a nut, uh, Phillips head there again. So all you really have to be concerned with is with, is with that. Phillips there, Phillips there and obviously this plate that runs along the top. Next thing to note is that there's an adhesive element behind the front panel which I've used a scalpel to cut away. Um, it's still it's quite tacky inside there so it's not, it's not all come to an end. Uh, I 
I did try heating it to uh, loosen it up before when I removed it to take the uh, piece of broken glass out before. And that was quite simple and straightforward. I'm making it harder because I'm on camera and this is the first time I'm trying to make a film. So, go <laughs> with me. Right. Okay. Magic. Right. There's your camera. Now, this piece of glass sat here, like that, and you're probably seeing it from this camera up here. It was quite easy to remove using the scalpel again. It's got a small bit of silicon mastic around the sides and it's stuck down with a piece of glue on the other side of the glass. Um, now, it measures, I'm saying off the top of my head here, but I can actually show you again. And I'd recommend that if you're going to do this yourself, I would recommend that you actually uh, measure it yourself as well. It may be different. I don't know. But I measured it to be... Nineteen millimeters by fourteen, as I recall. Yep, fourteen. So that's the piece that we want to make. Now I've got a slide here for the microscope. Now, perfect thing about this is that it's designed for a microscope, so the glass is actually already of a very fine grade for. Uh, using for optics, so no fear there for low grade glass. Now the next thing you're going to need for this is obviously a steel rule, a glass cutter designed for 1 to 3 mil glass and hopefully a marker that actually will sit on glass so that you don't have any difficulty setting up. Now, I'm going to get a goat down here. Being one millimetre and using the right tool for the job, it is relatively simple. Yeah. Relatively. Yeah. I already ruined that one. Right. Um, it does snap off quite easily. Um, it's actually cut it perfectly. Uh, not sure I want to keep this one there. No, no. Let's have a look. That's that to there. Now I should point out that there's tapered sides on this glass, and I had difficulty making this myself earlier. Um, yeah, that's actually come out pretty good. Yeah, it's very, it's very easy to do, um, easy to get wrong. Yeah. Oh, 
with any luck, that first corner should be, yeah, that's it. That's that. I just have to take three more, uh, two more corners off. It's quite straightforward. Sort of, kinda. <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> and there we go. So, once that's done. Well, I got one right. And this is just one of the part now. Okay, so, you've got that. Fits in there, doesn't fit in there. What have I done now? Mm -hmm. All you have to do is uh, use some sort of silicon elastic, bit of super glue, and you're away. Um, now, I'd like to say again that I, I did try my best with uh, Panasonic customer support to. Um, get them to repair my camera, willing to pay for it to be repaired, and uh, regardless of how much money I wanted to pay, they uh, sent me to third party repairers who, third party repairers would send me back to Panasonic, Panasonic would send me to a new set of repairers, those repairers would send me, send me back to Panasonic, and eventually I got speaking to one surety customer support service person who refused to accept that the uh, camera here that says um, shock and waterproof actually meant the camera was waterproof and therefore they would refuse to repair the camera regardless of what it says on the side of the camera despite the fact that it had a cracked lens and it was nothing to do oh, it did actually have something to do with water but um, it was more the fact that it was going through something it was designed to do. Um, I'd love some feedback on what to use for silicon to repair this camera because uh, it's a very small piece and I don't really want to try using motorcycle silicon um, flange sealant or anything like that to stick this down because it probably won't hold it for too long. So um, that's my vlog on my vlog of how to do this. Cool.